Hello everyone. In our previous video, we discussed the approaches that we can use for generating the JWT token. In this video, I'm going to implement the second approach. Inside the directory that is JSON web token, I'm going to add another directory called model. Inside this directory, I'm going to keep all the model classes that are needed for generating the token. This is the first model class that we need. And this is the second model class that we need. After this, I'm going to add a new class inside the same directory. And let me call it as JSON Web Token Authenticator. This class is going to inherit from the authenticator base. And then in this class, we need to provide the implementation for the abstract method. Inside this class, there is a constructor. The constructor takes an argument of type string. The value of this argument is used for initializing this string property. As you can see here, the constructor is protected. That means it is the responsibility of the child class to call this constructor. So inside this class, I'm going to create the constructor. For generating the JWT token, following are the information that we need base URL of the application, username password of the user. This information can be provided in the form of string variable. And this information can be provided in the form of an object of this class. And then I'm going to initialize both of these variables inside the constructor. And then I'm going to call the base class constructor using the keyword base. And pass the value as an empty string for the argument. As we are passing empty string, the initial value of this property will be empty string. In the authenticator base class, whatever the value that is being passed for this argument, is used for setting the value of the token property. So in the current case, the initial value of the token property will be empty string. Let us look at the existing authenticator to understand how they have implemented this method and we will also follow the same pattern. So one of the authenticator is HTTP basic authenticator in this class, this is how the abstract method is implemented. So I will also use the same pattern. Parameter is an entity that is coming from the Russia framework and header parameter is also an entity that is coming from the Russia framework. Header parameter inherits from the parameter entity. If you look at the implementation of this method, this method is basically associating the authorization information with the request. 
So in this method, I'm going to put a check on the token property. If the token property is null or empty, I'm going to call a method that is going to get the JWT token. And we know that the initial value of this property will be null because of this call. And if this condition is false, so basically we already have the token, I'm going to just reuse that token. Now let us implement the get token method. In this method, I'm going to use the using statement. The advantage of using the using statement is that this statement will invoke the dispose API on this object once all the operation inside this block is over. So first we need to create the request for user registration. This time I'm using a different API for sending the post request. Behind the scene, following are the operation this API is going to perform. Create a REST request of type POST. Serialize the given object into the JSON representation. And then send the POST request. So when you call this API, these are the set of operation it is going to perform. Let us look at the return type of this API. The return type of this API is of type HTTP status code, which represent the response status code. So I can add the validation on the response status code. After this, we are going to send the request for authenticating the created user. This API is going to perform these set of operation and in addition to this set of operation, it is going to deserialize the response into a type. In the current case, this API is going to deserialize the response to this type and using this model, we can extract the token. After this, I'm going to add the validation on the token. And then return the token. Before I return the token, I'm going to prepend the bearer keyword with the token. So this is the implementation of the custom authenticator. This method is invoked by the framework automatically whenever we set this property on the client. 